Samsung, along with their competition, is currently working with industry and academic foundations to create credible iris scanning applications for next level biometrics authentication. So, why should you be concerned? Biometric authentication, unlike digital authentication, like mobile numbers and passwords, can't be changed, spoofed, or turned off when this technology is adopted as a security standard. The biometric authentication technology they are looking to employ as a security standard in communication devices represents a unique human identifier. It cannot be changed, it cannot be deleted, and it will be able to track you and all of your digital-based activity plugged into the IoT or Internet of Things wherever you are, wherever you go, and whatever you do. This is a new standard of biometric authentication that will provide all of the advantages and functionality of the implanted RFID chip. In addition, the iris scanning technology will easily capture your unique bioidentifier without having to use invasive scanning technology such as near-field brain mapping. Although this technology is being touted as an unhackable security feature, which will be critical to the future of NFC financial transactions, it has a more nefarious side. This technology can also be used to tag everyone plugged into the IoT, much like the way Marlon Perkins, the zoologist from Wild Kingdom, was able to track wildlife in their natural habitats for scientific study. And as we see the full-on press to digitize everything and plug it all into the global neural net, there is a disturbing trend developing. That trend points to collecting, tracking, and monitoring every aspect of your life. I'm sure you've noticed that new phones over the past year or so come complete with features like Android Pay and Apple Pay to entice you to enter all of your financial information, including bank account info, as well as all of your credit card info, for you to enjoy the convenience of conducting all of your financial transactions using your handheld mobile device. Some providers are even offering $100 gift cards if you activate the service at the time you purchase your new phone. Have you stopped to wonder why you can no longer buy a new cell phone? Phone upgrades are now more or less leases where you're charged for your new device on a monthly phone bill. Have you ever wondered why the insurance coverage you have on your phone is now only good for two years? After two years, the provider will no longer accept monthly premium payments on your device. There's a reason for this, and that reason is to force people into having to upgrade their phones after two years to ensure that the general population is using the latest technology, which will be promoted as a can't live without convenience, but it's actually ensuring that the general population is using the most sophisticated surveillance technology being rolled out. And as we see the TA phenomena, or tech addiction, growing, people can't wait to upgrade. And as a side note here, I was forced to upgrade my phone, and I had chosen the model seen here, the Samsung um, S6 Plus Edge, and I'm here to tell you that this phone does nothing. It's promoted in its advertising. All of the features and um, functionalities of this phone that is supposed to set it apart from other devices that you have to choose from do not work. First of all, the battery after th only three hours making no phone calls, receiving no text messages, checking no emails, the phone went from 100% battery to 60% battery in only three hours. Again, the second um, feature on this phone that is basically obsolete but yet it is the primary feature that the phone is being advertised on is its edge feature which does not work if you have the phone in a case and it does not work unless the phone is placed face down on a surface thus increasing the possibility of damage of damage to the face of the phone 
overuse. Further researching this particular phone and others as well that are available now as being touted as the latest and greatest technology, I found one reason why the battery life is so limited, and that is because the amount of background applications and programmings, programming, which by the way, you cannot even see in the running applications of the phone's menu, are draining so much power in the data collection and storage in the phone that it no longer functions efficiently as a handheld communication device. This is one of the problems that they're looking to circumvent in NFC power transfer technology, which I'll explain. The information is being collected and cataloged for purposes of real-time monitoring or for later retrieval in order to predict and preempt activity of individuals, groups, or population-centric areas. This new security feature, as it's being promoted, is necessary for the rollout of the complete command and control system required to monitor, track, and evaluate activity-based intelligence on the populations of nation-states. It is important to know that this biometric scanning technology is not limited to your cell phones. It will be employed on tablets, personal computers, and smart TVs. The basis of this technology is transmitter receiver based. It centers around transmitting a modulated light signal to your iris and then resending that signal back to the device in the form of a reflected light signal all being picked up by the optic nerve, which is directly connected to your brain. If you have any doubt about where the patents for emerging technology in this area are going, let's take a brief look at what's in store. Microsoft's second smart ring invention comes to light in the last month. Smart rings designed to control devices for small form factor equipment. Microsoft notes that a user wearing an example of a pressure-sensitive smart ring, as noted in this patent in Figure 5 above, a user is engaging the digital display of a smartwatch. In this example, the digital display device includes a depth sensor that can be manifest as a red, green, blue, plus a depth camera. In figure six here of this patent, the system includes, as you see, a pressure sensitive smart ring, a digital display device, a depth sensor, smart glasses, smart watch, and a smartphone, any of which of these devices can communicate over one or more network. Microsoft filed their patent application for this technology back in May of 2014, and they're not alone in trying to devise a smart ring device. A published Google patent filing was revealed back in 2012 titled Google Reveals Video Glasses Working with Magic Rings and Invisible Tattoos. Samsung Wearable Modular Sensor Platform Patent Comes to Light. Korea's reported that Samsung Electronics would commercialize biosensors for smartwatches in the first quarter of 2016 because its smartphone business is slowing down. Wearable devices equipped with sensors are known uh, that they are able to track the, um, biofeedback such as sleep statistics and or physiological data such as heart rate, perspiration, and skin temperature. As pointed out in this patent, such devices are not well suited for long-term wear by infants or uncooperative patients, such as a patient with schizophrenia, who may unexpectedly remove existing sensors. This patent summary further points out that there is a disadvantage in existing systems with wireless connectivity, for example, they generally exhibit a short battery life. They are not suitable for conditions or long-term wireless transmission for more than only a few hours. In addition, existing wireless devices do not support robust data collection and analysis remotely of the device. Samsung filed their U.S. patent application back in May of 2015. Their Korean patent was filed only one year earlier. 
one of Google's next moonshots is advancing medical laser systems. This technology relates to a new remote medical laser ablation surgery system. Google notes that an active tracking system can be used to control a, he a heating laser to continuously heat a target region of a biological tissue, even when the target region moves relative to the heating laser itself. Google states in their patent application that a number of scientific methods have been developed to destroy, damage, excise, ablate, or otherwise alter biological tissue. By the application of high temperature focused beams and the application of electrical and or electromagnetic energies directly or indirectly into the tissue to induce changes in the tissues through the application of heat and or electrical fields. Google filed for their patent application back in May of 2014. Google files a patent for a second generation autonomous vehicle without a steering wheel brake pedal, and more. Google has revealed various aspects of the technology behind their next generation autonomous vehicle. The passenger is simply seated in the vehicle as if they were in a cab. Google is initiating a concierge service reachable by the center user console or by the use of your own smartphone should you feel nervous or about to freak out by not knowing what to do if something goes wrong. Google's patent covers technology that relates to autonomous vehicles for maneuvering a user or passenger to a destination. In order to do so, the user may provide a pickup location and a destination location for the trip to a centralized dispatching system via a client computing device such as a mobile phone. However, once the vehicle has arrived at the pickup location, the vehicle may need to authenticate the user again before unlocking the vehicle's doors and allowing the user to enter. This would seem to bring about an end to loaning your vehicle to a friend or family member who is not authenticated on the user control system. Once the user is authenticated, the vehicle may unlock its doors and allow the user to enter and initiate the trip. In some cases, however, the authentication may fail before the re user reaches the vehicle. In that instance, a message may be relayed to a customer support representative and or the server computing device, which could unlock the doors. However, such an approach requires the vehicle to be within a data zone. If this attempt fails, the passenger may have to try again. If the vehicle does not unlock its doors with some additional amount of time, the, the ride may be automatically canceled. This brings into question what happens if the user of the vehicle, the authenticated user, undergoes some type of an emergency situation where they are incapacitated or in need of immediate medical attention. How does the user or the passenger in this case take over controls of the vehicle to transport the user or the autonomous driver to an emergency medical facility or to a hospital? If they're unable to be authenticated through the vehicle itself or through the operator's authentication communication device. The user's input is limited to a microphone and features of the console and wireless network connections. In this regard, internal electronic displays merely provides information to the passenger and need not include a touch screen or other interface for user input. The console, however, contains various buttons for controlling features of the vehicle. For example, for, there are buttons for unlocking and locking the doors, raising and lowering the windows, for controlling the heating function of the seats, as well as buttons for controlling the volume of the speakers, all which are superfluous to actually operating the vehicle should a manual override be required. The console also includes buttons for initiating communication with a concierge via one of the wireless network connections, 
Once the concierge workstation is connected to the vehicle, the concierge may communicate with the passenger via the speakers and or the internal electronic display. In addition, the microphone allows the passenger to speak directly to the concierge. In some cases, the vehicle may include an internal still or video camera that allows the concierge to view the status of the passengers and confirm their safety. Google further notes that due to the fact that the passenger does not have direct control of the acceleration or deceleration of the vehicle, an emergency stop button has been implement, implemented that is critical to allowing a passenger to feel safe and act quickly in case of an immediate emergency. The passenger may communicate with the concierge via a phone call or application on the passenger's client computing device, a microphone, and or the concierge button, and in turn, the concierge may provide required instructions to control certain aspects of the vehicle. Google also announced that their invention could be applicable not only to individual autonomous passenger vehicles, but to a wider range of vehicles, including trucks, motorcycles, buses, recreational vehicles, and I dare say commercial vehicles. Google filed their patent application one year ago this month. Microsoft invents new wearables control system that's driven by surface sound and action gestures, among other things. Earlier this month, the U.S. Patent Office published the new Microsoft patent application covering an invention that relates to using wearables in a new way to control other devices. The wearables could be a ring or a wristband, and it would be able to control other smart devices around you, such as a TV, smartphone, or HMD. One drawback with such three-dimensional gesture tracking devices is that they have high power requirements which present challenges for implementation in portable computing devices. Sound waves are the input means by which the audio input is recorded and deciphered. Microsoft notes that the hand-worn device may further compromise a battery configured to store energy and energy harvesting circuitry, including an energy harvesting coil. The energy harvesting circuitry may include a capacitor. The energy harvesting circuitry may be configured to siphon energy from a device other than the hand-worn device via a wireless energy transfer technique such as NFC or near-field communication or an inductive charging standard and charge the battery with the siphoned energy. The energy may also be siphoned from a mobile phone. Holding the mobile phone may put the hand-worn device in close proximity to the NFC chip in the mobile phone allowing the hand-worn device to charge the battery throughout the day without requiring the wearer to remove the hand-worn microtechnology. This computing device may also allow a user to access a plurality of devices within the home or within nearby fields. For example, turning on various appliances in the home by using one hand-worn device. Microsoft notes that natural user interface components may include a microphone for speech and or voice recognition, an infrared color, stereoscopic and or depth camera for machine vision and or gesture recognition, a head tracker, eye tracker, accelerometer and or gyroscope for motion detection and or intent recognition, as well as an electric field sensing component for assessing brain activity. Microsoft filed their patent application back in May of 2014. Google invents an Android feature that will turn off your wearable device when driving, but not when you're a passenger. Earlier this month, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office published the patent application from Google revealing a possible future Android feature that would turn off a device when a user is driving a vehicle but keep it fun 
functioning if the user is a passenger. User interaction with certain functions of a mobile device may be unsafe and or unlawful when a user of the mobile device is simultaneously operating a vehicle. To promote safe and or lawful interaction with the mobile device, some mobile devices enable or disable certain functions and features responsive to the mobile device detecting that the mobile device is located in a moving vehicle, even if a user of the moving device is merely a passenger in the moving vehicle. The mobile device may unnecessarily prevent the user from safely and lawfully accessing one or more functions of the mobile device, i.e. your cell phone. Google's patent filing may enable a wearable computing device to perform an operation based on a determination that a user of the wearable device is driving a moving vehicle. When the wearable computing device is located at, on, or within the trans the transportation moving vehicle, an inference may be made that the user of the wearable computing device is riding in the transportation vehicle. Based on the indication of movement detected by the wearable computing device, a determination can be made as to whether the person riding in the moving vehicle is driving the moving vehicle. Now, this, beyond a shadow of a doubt, implies that a third-party operator or monitor will now have the ability to enable or disable your cell phone or other mobile device while you are just merely riding in a, in a transportation vehicle. This brings in a whole new element of control to not only communication but free movement. In this manner, the wearable computing device can promote safe and lawful use of the device without unnecessarily enabling or disabling certain features when a person wearing the device is riding in the transportation vehicle. Last year, Android Central was hoping that Google was working on this, and today's patent revelation proves they are. Microsoft wants personal computers to get a whole lot more personal to keep you cool. A Microsoft patent application came to light this week revealing how they want to make personal computing a lot more cooler for users in the future. This week, Microsoft's cool new hybrid notebook called the Surface Book comes to market and many will be jumping on Microsoft's first notebook that's being hailed by Engadget as the ultimate laptop. According to Microsoft's patent filing, the repeated triggering of stress reflex during daily activity may result in chronic stress leading to a large array of adverse health conditions. In order to mitigate user stress, the stress level of a user of a computing device may be detected in an unobtrusive and continuous manner so that the user's stress can be assessed. For example, the pressure applied to keys of a pressure-sensitive keyboard and or mouse may be monitored to sense the manifestations of stress in a user. Any of the computing devices referred to earlier may include a sensor subsystem, including one or more image sensors, microphones, etc., configured to capture user posture, gestures, and or voice input. The posture, gestures, and or voice input may be interpreted by the computing device to determine a relative stress level for that user. For example, an increased amount of gesturing or the use of strong or foul language may indicate a high level of stress. User stress may be determined based on recognition of facial features associated with stress by information captured by the sensor subsystem which is captured by a thermal camera by comparing forehead and nose colors or heat maps to one another. Example types of stress include cognitive load, chronic stress, heightened arousal, remembering past memories, physical stress, fear, and or danger. According to Microsoft, 
If it is detected that the user is experiencing a relatively high level of stress, one or more actions may be taken to assist the user in mitigating his or her stress. For example, the environment in which the user is working may be made more soothing by adjusting the lighting, sound, volume, or other environmental factors. Other examples of mechanisms for notifying the user include adjusting a system tray icon, adjusting a co the color of the keyboard, adjusting a color of the display device, and for providing feedback via clothing that provides hepa um, hepatic feedback to the system. By notifying the user of his or her stress level, the user may take measures to reduce his or her stress, such as taking a walk, meditating, etc. In some embodiments of this invention, a person other than the user could additionally or, or alternatively be notified of the user's stress level, such as a family member or someone on the user's social network. A new Google patent filing reveals methods of mapping brain functions and analyzing epigenetic zones. Electrocorticography was dubbed as a surgical protocol used to treat patients with severe epilepsy. The cortical potentials recorded by the ECOG were used to identify epileptogenic zones, regions of the cortex that generate epileptic seizures. These zones would then be surgically removed from the cortex during resectioning, thus destroying the brain tissue where epileptic seizures have originated. This procedure was used to explore the functional anatomy of the human brain, mapping speech areas and identifying the somatosensory and somatomotor cortex areas to be excluded from surgical removal. Google has filed a patent relating to this medical field titled Microelectrode Array for Google's patent shows an application of the microelectrode array according to the invention when recording an electrocorticogram of a human being. The microelectrode array is wirelessly connected to an electronic control device which comprises an amplifier for the electrode signals and a data acquisition system. The microelectrode array implanted below the patient's scalp has an energy receiving coil and an antenna for bi-directional data transfer between the microelectrode array and the electronic control device. It is also possible for the energy receiving coil simultaneously to be used as an antenna, such that no separate antenna is required. The microelectrode array and the device comprising a microelectrode array can be used for mapping brain functions and for analyzing epileptogenic zones. It's interesting to note that there are three assignees noted to the patent application. They include Google, Leibniz Institute, Otto von Gorich University. Google's participation in the patent is unknown at this time. Now we can just skim through some of the other emerging technology um, coming to bear in the near future and I'll provide links to these patent summaries below so that you can check them out for yourself, but they include Samsung continues to work on microprojectors in spite of their failed beam smartphone. Samsung continues to envision iris scanning on mobile devices and future smart TVs. Samsung Glass patent points to incorporating an advanced microprojector. Google and Microsoft end their patent war. Samsung patent reveals an in-depth glass project that could be miles ahead of Google's. And last but not least, Microsoft is granted a design patent for their HoloLens device, which is um, a head-mounted virtual reality device. 
If you think this unprecedented intrusion on our personal lives and biometric data collection is contained to the adult population predominantly in the form of handheld communication devices, au contraire, mon ami, Wi-Fi enabled toys are now being embedded with the same grade NSA spying and data collection capabilities, all in the name of creating an enhanced play environment for your children. Let's look at Hello Barbie, which is being billed as the world's first interactive doll. In this particular example, Hello Barbie can be accessed by third parties through the activation of an embedded microphone in the product. Not only is the doll system hackable, according to security researcher Matt Jacobowski, the doll's embedded Wi-Fi system automatically connects to the internet upon activation, sending the doll system information, including account information, stored audio files, as well as direct microphone access credentials and voice maps to the cloud. This information can then be used to identify the location of the doll, or more specifically, the location of the child the doll asso is associated with or any other Wi-Fi based toy that connects to the internet. On another level, explains security analyst, once the doll's been compromised or hacked, it can be made to say whatever a third party intruder wants it to say in real time on an interactive basis with your child. In addition, if that's not bad enough, the doll as its Wi-Fi base can collect and send information about your home network up to the cloud where that information can then be compromised in order to breach your Wi-Fi enabled home network. How seemingly innocuous yet diabolical a Trojan horse of this guise presents. When you think about how much of your banking, bill pay, paperless financial transactions, and other personal information and transaction activity, the typical person conducts on their home network. Kaspersky Labs not only warns of this doll's potential security threat to your children, but of the security threat aspect to the parents' privacy in the form of a connected device with absolutely no virus protection or configurable intrusion safeguards available on these toys. Of course, since this massive security and privacy breach was identified, the CEOs of Mattel and Toy Talk vehemently deny claims that their product can be used in the manner demonstrated by the security experts, citing, quote, we have invested a lot of effort to build the safest experience possible for parents and their children, end quote. So don't think twice about buying your child the latest and greatest interactive toy with Wi-Fi and internet connectivity. Think three or four times before you do. In my humble opinion, it is more important for children to learn to interact with other children and their parents than to be conditioned to interact with pervasive forms of technology. Oh, and by the way, as a footnote to this example, VTech, another interactive toy maker specializing in electronic learning toys for children and tablets for toddlers, revealed that a compromise of its core operating system led to the theft of names, physical and email addresses, and home-based network computer security credentials of millions of families worldwide. If you still believe that all of these technological enhancements are being provided to improve the human experience, be warned. It's being provided for increased surveillance and assimilation. And the ironic twist is that many people will not only blindly accept it, but they'll embrace it.